Right then, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for a, a video on Gran Turismo 6. Um, a game which I have dipped in and out of on my channel a few times before. And now, I want to get my thought across on Gran Turismo 6. It really isn't a good game. In fact, in many ways, it is quite a bad game. But, well, when the, fir when the game first came out, in late 2013, the game was horrific. It was really bad. And since then, they've updated it quite a lot, and it's now slightly better. I mean, the game isn't that bad, but compared to the previous five Gran Turismo games, it is a complete letdown. But, um, and obviously, one of the late updates they did was adding B-Spec, which, which is a feature which wasn't in Gran Turismo 6 originally, which I think was one of its biggest crimes. Um, and I, I've, I, I remember I tried B-Spec out once before in this game, and I remember it being the weirdest experience ever, because it, it was like, it was like a hybrid between A-Spec and B-Spec. By the way, B-Spec is where the game drives for you. And I have got history with B-Spec on Gran Turismo before. He's going to fifth, but you know, this is only a four. He's run out wide. Oh, great. Whoa, okay, no, don't go flying over that bump. Oh my god. What a prick. So I know how idiotic B-Spec is, and Gran Turismo 4, as you saw, it's uh, frustrating. Gran Turismo 5, it's kind of pointless. Um, but anyway, I just want to see how good the B-Spec actually is. I'm going to properly test out the B-Spec and see if it's actually quite good on this game. Not to say it matters, because I finished this game way before the B-Spec, or before the update for B-Spec ever came out. I've done pretty much the entire game, so... You know, I I never really had an opportunity to properly test B-Spec, and I never had a use for it, because I already finished the game. But anyway, let me test out B-Spec. I'm going to do one easy championship, one middling championship, and one difficult championship, or a race, I should say, not an entire championship. And I'm going to see how well the B-Spec gets on. So I have found a race to test out B-Spec on. This is the Amateur Cup in the novice class of um, of racing. And I thought, well, this is a, this is a, hopefully a nice, easy start for um, for the B spec. What's the 450 performance points or less? Okay, um, it's ordered by performance points. Oh, um, hang on. What what opponents are we coming up against? What sort of cars are we going to be facing? An Eagle Talon, a Peugeot 307. Right, we don't want to be that overpowered then. Okay, hang on. Well, that was a beautiful sound there. So, the Lancia Stratos, the 15th anniversary edition, well, not of the car, but the 15th anniversary edition of the game, which basically you got a set, uh, you got a set of special cars, um, or special livery cars when you pre-ordered Gran Turismo 6, which unfortunately I did. But yeah, anyway, well, let's just head on. So, I thought I would check the event to see if it is possible to win this race in the Lancia Stratos. So, I did the event myself just then, and... As you can see, I, I went from last to first in the lap, and it's a two-lap race, so I could easily do it with, you know, only halfway into the race, so B-Spec should easily be able to do it, so let's see how he goes, hopefully. Well, he should do quite well. Now, I need to, because as I said, I tried B-Spec out once before, and I remember it being, it was weird, because um, I changed the pace. Okay, so we got three settings. Um... Oh yes, if you hold down R1, you get these... It's weird, you can like drive the car for the computer, which begs the question, why on earth would you want a B-Spec in the first place? Well, my guy's already moved up into fourth place. But look, because if you hold down R1, you can press X to accelerate, and then you accelerate for him. Which begs the question, what's the point? So hang on, what happens if I do it then? You are time to accelerate, I guess it's useful then. But the... The thing is though, is why would you play the game, I mean I guess playing the game solely on B-Spec is kind of pointless, but why would you have a B-Spec mode in which it basically relies on you to drive the car for the, I mean look, B-Spec he hasn't really improved his intelligence from Gran Turismo 5, so if we hold down X for him, or we could hold down Triangle to tell him to overtake, what about if we hold down Circle to make him slipstream, and then hold down Triangle to make him overtake? 
And he's done it easily, okay. Um, although, oh, I thought he was going to go off then. That beautiful 15th anniversary edition of the Lancia Stratos. I mean, initial impressions, I don't see the point of this mode because it's B spec, but it kind of sort of relies on you to tell it what to do. I mean, I guess you probably could get away without using the real time controls, but then what's the point? Well, that is a nice sounding car, and again, the 15th anniversary edition cars just seem to be the best. I don't know why, I mean, there's only... I don't know, there weren't too many 15th um, edition anniversary cars, but they do seem to be the good ones. Maybe I modified these, because I might well have done... Yeah, I did modify this one, that's that's why it's appearing at the top, because obviously, when you, when you get given a Ford GT40 at the start of the game, you do kind of use it, so that's why it's appearing at the top. Um, is there anything else I could do? Oh, we could do that and we'll put it right on the cusp of performance points. Um, sports soft, yep. Okay. Right, and anyway, I forgot to say we're at an International B uh, license event at the Indianapolis Road Course in the, uh, the Tour of America. No, it's definitely cut out for it. Yep, yeah, no, this car is definitely... Jesus, this car without traction control is not nice. Um, really not nice. But, no, oh, this car has definitely got, at the very least, the straight line speed to definitely win this championship. Right then, so onto the beast spec. As you saw, I got past tons and tons of people. Do you know what? I could tell him to overtake, but I'm going to see if he can do it on his own accord. Because I could just hold down R1 and press triangle, but... What's the point? I mean, what's the point of having a B spec if you have to tell him what to do all the time? I know, I know, you kind of had to micromanage him in Gran Turismo 4 and 5, but well, to be fair, if you don't tell him what to do, he does do all right. Well, I got into the lead in just less than a lap, and so did B spec. Wow! I tell you what, the B spec is actually quite good in this game. I still, I'm struggling to see the point of it, because it's quite weird, but, um, no, well, there you go, to be fair, he's quite good, quite aggressive, and I didn't tell him at all, I didn't do, I didn't do any real-time controls that race, and he overtook pretty willingly, so, th that's all good. Right, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that event again, so I turned off the engine tuning, I put it off from stage 3 to standard, um, I removed the intake tuning, and same for the turbo, so I'm going to do the championship again, not myself, but just with B-Spec, and I'm going to see in a car which is about 70 performance points lower than it was before, I'm going to see if he can actually still put up a fight. Right, so coming up to halfway in this race, and I things are looking good, I don't know what on earth he's doing weaving around all over the place, but look, this guy, he's dressed up as Ayrton Senna, and I'll tell you what, he may as well be Ayrton Senna, because... Look how well he's doing, he's caught right up to the front two. The Ford GT has finally got past the um, the GT Mustang. And I'll tell you what, yep, so is my guy, so it's a... F oh no, not quite. There you go, so now it's a Ford GT1-2. And bearing in mind, um, I don't know whether this car's overpowered or whether B-Spec is good. I ha have a feeling this car is quite overpowered. Because this championship, the maximum performance points required... Um, or the minimum, no, yeah, the maximum. The performance point limit to enter this championship is 600. This car in its current state is only 529 performance points. So to get up this close to the leader is uh, is very good. Although having said that, he does seem to now be losing time to the leader. Right, well now that the Ford GT ahead of us actually cleared the GT Mustang, he does seem to be setting similar pace. So. This is the first instruction I've given to my B-Spec driver all race. I've told him to, to push it hard and, oh, look how fast he's going now. 136 miles an hour. The other car was going 16 miles an hour slower. And look at my B-Spec go. Look at him. That is fantastic stuff. And as I said, I don't see how this car can be better. I know it's the 15th anniversary edition special, but there's no way that the old GT40 is 
better than the... Oh, no, he's gone off there. But still, there's no way the old GT40 is that much better than the modern-day Ford GT. But, well, who knows? Whatever the explanation, my B-Spec's doing amazing. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, I, this, is a, this is one of the many reasons why I don't like Gran Turismo 6. They call these... The, the most difficult events in the game, the 24 minutes of Le Mans. I'm sorry, but when one of the longest races in your game is 24 minutes, and this is a franchise which used to have 24 hour long races, like genuine 24 hour races in Gran Turismo 4 and Gran Turismo 5, how come suddenly the longest race they want to do is 24 minutes? Right, so I've scrapped the Super License events, as you saw, 24 minutes of Le Mans. I'm not even going to give that the time of day. Um, so I've found the Rain Masters Championship. Now this, this is a better challenge, because what better way is there to test how good the B-Spec is than putting them in rain conditions? To be honest, I forgot wet weather was even a thing in Gran Turismo 6. But um, I've looked, the cars will be going up against, you know, the sort of, you know, Lexus LFA, Z06. Um, so we need a car to match them. I'm not going to go in the 15th anniversary edition Huayra because I want to go in the car which isn't a 15th anniversary edition because they do seem to be weirdly quick. So, um... Well, what a car. The Jaguar XJ220. This car on paper would be quite hideously underpowered. Because, yeah, the performance point limit is 650, and this car is only 563, but we'll give it a bash anyway. Do you know what? I've been really, really impressed by this Jaguar. Oh, God. Oh, God. Because, to be fair, I have had to turn on the racing line, because my first attempt just went horrifically. But, um, considering this car is nowhere near the performance point limit, I might, well win this race and if you want to know why my second lap is significantly slower than my first lap well that's because I crashed um, at Blanchemont on my uh, second lap but I think I'm just about gonna take the lead this hasn't been especially easy I will be honest I probably did sh I, in fact I say probably I know for a fact I straight lined Eau Rouge on at least two of my laps but, um, because th th it, is, it is quite difficult to drive, um, and now I'm talking, I'm going all over the place. But no, I have won this race just about, and as I said, I've been very impressed by this Jaguar, because it's done extremely well. I, I mean, as I say, there's so far the performance point limit, I wasn't expecting it to, um, I wasn't expecting to win. But, I just about won, so we'll have to see whether B-Spec can do it. I will give B-Spec benefit of the doubt, but I am expecting... B spec at the very least to get in the top five. And coming round the final bit of the bus stop chicane. There we go, okay, so I did have benefit. In fact, god, that third lap was really slow. Well, okay, but I mean, yeah. Well, there you go, anyway. See, I mean, I will give B spec benefit the doubt, but I would expect it to come in the top five, definitely. Right then, so here we are, the wet race at Spa, and of course it's going to be wet when we're at Spa, I mean, you don't ever, ever get a dry race at Spa, well obviously you do, but I mean, there's been way too many wet, wet races at Spa, but anyway, that doesn't matter, we've got to catch up to the light car company, rocket car I believe it is, and in fact I'm going to get some kind of, uh, I will probably give my B-Spec driver some instructions, I'm going to tell him to push hard, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him because I know for this championship ain't all that easy. We don't have an overpowered car like the previous events. In fact, we probably have quite an underpowered car. But we're up into 13th place, and we've only got three laps. So, you know, we have got to catch up quite quickly. I'll tell you one good thing about the real-time controls. Actually, is although we did just shove off that alpha there, but I'll tell you one good thing about the real-time controls is when you hold down R1 you can actually see the AI's break and throttle application so I guess you could actually learn a couple of tricks learning when to accelerate and to brake through this but I still kind of think it's kind of pointless but 
hey look, B-Spec's in the game and this is how you use it. And as we saw in the previous races, B-Spec can do, well, mostly fine without you. Although having said that, he is, he's not, he's taking this, he, he doesn't mind being on the back of that Viper, which is quite annoying. Right, well, I have no idea what happened there because the spray... Whoa, just cut the bus stop chicane there. All right, okay. I thought I was the only one who was a little bit dirty with the track limits. But no, my B-Spec is, um... He's not really respecting the track limits too much either. But, um... Yeah, I completely forgot what I was going to say, actually. Oh, yeah, I was going to say I have no idea how we got past those guys just then because I couldn't see a single thing because of the spray. But, um... We're up into ninth. I don't think B Spec's gonna win, but as I said, this car is extremely underpowered. I mean, look, we we saw. I mean, the Huayra that I owned has has got way more performance points than this Jag, and the Huayras are one and two. So as long as he finishes high up, he's done very well. To be fair. see that the B-Spec, they're still lacking some aggression because as you saw we broke out a Blanchemont and I don't think he was braking to stay on track, I think he was literally braking so he didn't go into the back of the Aston Martin. And obviously again I had to hold down R1 and hold down Triangle. So I think B-Spec is useful if your car is overpowered, but if your car is overpowered then why would you want to use B-Spec anyway? It's still quite, it still kind of seems like a useless feature. Gran Turismo 4 B-Spec was useful because you could speed up the races. Gran Turismo 5 it was kind of pointless but at least B-Spec had its own separate championship. Right now I'm still struggling to see the point of it because as, as you saw I finished the game pretty much completely and I don't see what I missed out on by not having B-Spec. Right so my B-Spec driver is right up behind an Enzo and he has got past a Ferrari Enzo and I'm sure Pretty much everyone would agree, I can't say with 100% certainty, but I'm pretty certain a Jag XJ220 is slower than a Ferrari Enzo, but yeah, he's just got past, and I think B-Spec is good. I mean, look, as I said time and time before, you know, I mean, this car is underpowered for this championship, and he's, you know, he is outperforming it, I'd say. I said if he got into the top five, he's done very well. Um, he's just outside of that, because I mean, I think up in 5th, is that a, a Zonda Sink? I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. But, um, 6th is very good, and we all know Ayrton Senna was a Rainmaster back in his day, and this guy, he's doing pretty well in the Rainmaster Championship, considering the car I've given him. I mean, look, all fairness to him, he has caught up to the Zonda right at the end, he, he just about hasn't got enough time or enough track to pass. The Zonda, but I think again, oh hang on, he might do, hold down R1, hold down Triangle, come on, a race to the line, he's not going to do it, is he, no, but 6th place, fair enough to him actually, that wasn't too bad going, I mean, as I said, look, the Sync, the W12, the F1 and the two Huayras, I think we can agree that all of those cars ahead are quicker than a standard XJ220, yet, um, the B-Spec did very well, so actually, I will give B-Spec on Gran Turismo 6, despite my doubts, I will give it a thumbs up, despite the fact I still think it's kind of pointless. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and I just wanted to do a one-off video because obviously F1 2016 is coming out very, very soon and I needed a video to fill in the gap and I thought I'd do something slightly different and thus the idea for this video was born. Because generally, I'll tell you something I have noticed is whenever I want to do a one-off video, nine times out of ten it's done on Gran Turismo, but hey, I do love Gran Turismo and I really do want to do more videos on it. And when Gran Turismo Sport comes out in the near future, I am going to do videos on that game, despite the fact I do think that game is going to be quite bad, even worse than this, to be honest. So uh, yeah, guys, as I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you look forward to the future videos I've got coming up, and I'll see you guys next time. So I'll see you then.